How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? So the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. current situation is stuck at the airport. A little weather delay, lots of snow in Albany and Detroit, which have kept me from getting to Milwaukee, which is my ultimate destination today. But in that time, two very significant things have happened. One, uh, the 5AM group has started a Slack channel which is absolutely phenomenal because the 5AM group is by far my favorite group of insurance agents to share ideas, thoughts, all kinds of different things about running an insurance business, running a business in general, being a leader, being a creator. Uh, we have lots of great and dynamic conversations about what it means to be a professional in today's world and, and how important are things like doing video like this and where should a leader fall in terms of creating. And that's ultimately uh, the second piece here because uh, sitting in the airport here, I'm in, uh, you guys can see I'm in, I'm in Detroit right now. I uh, spent most of my time in Albany, but finally made it to Detroit. I got a lot of, I, I got to spend a lot of time thinking about what it means to be a leader and our role as leaders. How much time can someone who's put in a leadership position in, a, in an organization spend on actually creating? I think it's a really challenging question because the, I think the, the instinct of many people is when you hit a, a certain level of leadership and you have individuals who uh, report to you, report up to you, that your first instinct is to go into process and dive into all the different aspects of the organization and, and try to work things out and document and analyze statistics and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not sure that's the answer. I was sitting on the plane and I was thinking about this idea of the, the two things in leadership that can really help you stand out. Uh, one of them is creativity, so visionary, inspirational, motivational, being able to help your people see the bigger picture, help your customers see the bigger picture. Uh, this is the, the Steve Jobs idea, right, where you can, you can really project a vision and a, and a creative sense on your product and take yourself to another level, help you stand out. The other is efficiency. Can you be that, that worker, that, that tactician, that, that strategist who really understands the logistics of making your business run smoother and more effectively? And those are the two pieces that help you stand out as a leader. Everything else is basically the bar the bar for being a leader in an organization. But if you can be creative and you can be efficient, you can truly stand out. And those are the two areas that I'm personally gonna be working on in 2018. I don't think, I think the creativity piece, I'm maybe a little more ahead of. I don't always necessarily communicate it in the best way, and I need to get better at that. But it's the efficiency piece that I struggle with. I think because I come into so many situations from a creative mindset, I'm not always thinking as that tactician. I'm not planning and strategizing the way that I should to really take the creative ideas to the next level. I'm doing this 100% for Sydney Rowe. Sydney, eat your heart out. We're flying inside drone, inside drone. There's Stacy, inside droning in the new Milwaukee office. chance to meet with Reed from Tech Canary. Reed, uh, you are the leader of your company, you're the founder, CEO. What's like one leadership thing that you are dealing with right now? 
One of the things that I'm dealing with right now um, is really taking a step back with the company as we're growing really, really fast and really spending a lot more of my time being more strategic rather than tactical within the organization and um, really helping um, my leaders lead their teams as opposed to um, me doing a lot of that work myself. That's a good one, man. I struggle with the same things. Thanks, bro. So attempt number one to get drone shots of Milwaukee, complete bust, and that's because it is freezing cold out. You can actually see Milwaukee behind me right here. Uh, it is freezing cold out. My hands are still, I can still feel it in my hands. It's, it's probably like 20 degrees with about 15 mile per hour winds coming off the lake and that makes it feel like around nine, at least that's what weather.com says. And, uh, and it really felt it. So it was about 20 minute walk down to the river, which then would take me out to the lake and I wanted to get drone shots of the sunrise and then looking back at the city and, and, the, and the river hitting the lake. And I was like, wow, this is, this is a really cool spot to get a ton of great footage. And it just wasn't happening. It was way too cold. It was way too windy to send the drone up. There were power lines around there and uh, I just couldn't get in a good spot. While I was walking down in the freezing cold, I came up with a third idea around this idea of leadership. And, and really, I'm just, I'm telling you things that I need to work on. Uh, I believe in a decentralized form of leadership, meaning that means I give the directors in my company, my, my generals, the next level down, I give them autonomous power to make high, relatively high level decisions. And I want them to have that. I want them to act as individual units, all fighting for the same purpose, but being able to do so on their own terms, as long as it fits uh, the strategy of the overall company and where we're trying to go. The reason, I, the reason I take on this model is one, I'm not a micromanager by nature, and I'm not necessarily controlling by nature in, in any way, shape, or form, nor do I like being controlled, so I, I can't put that on my people. Second of all, I don't have the time or, or really the mental ability, the mental capacity to make every decision that happens in the marketing and sales function of Agency Nation and TrustedChoice.com. I just, I just can't keep up with it. And actually, a, a few months ago, I started to find myself showing up to meetings and I couldn't, it took half the meeting to catch me up on why I was actually there to make a decision when really after, you know, after 35, 40 minutes, I would just say over the phone, well, what do you think? And nine times out of 10, I would agree with whatever that person's perspective was because I had put them in the place, they had done all the work and research, and why was I the one that needed to make the decision when really I was just gonna rely on them anyways? It's a learning process, it takes time because you know, one of the things that I've also learned is when you do this, sometimes people make decisions that you wouldn't make. And I think as leaders, we have to allow our people to, 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 to play those scenarios out. I may think that something's a good play, but that person may need to learn that I'm right. I, they may need to prove me that, that my way was wrong or that they, there's another way to do things. And all these, all these paths are so healthy for an organization. So I think the three big things that I'm working on are uh, being more creative and, and creating more as a leader. I think that, that stands out. Uh, being more efficient and effective in managing the team and our, more importantly, our processes internally. And then the last is delegating, giving more responsibility, more power uh, to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis to my team member. At the end of the day, you can't make every decision and be an effective company. And uh, I think the leaders that are willing to delegate stand out. All right, enough screwing around. Time to go get ready for work. So I have the guys from Appulet with me, Jeffrey Harris and Dimitri Nicoline, and I'm just gonna have them give you, guys, this whole episode is about leadership. Sure. Give me, Jeff, you first, one thing that you're working on as a leader and how you're gonna attack it. Well, I think one of the things that we've always done well is we brought really great people to Appulate, talent-wise, right? 
and, and you have to, if you're gonna bring in great people, you have to be willing to listen to them. They have ideas and they have experiences and backgrounds that help to make what you're yeah. doing uh, a, a lot better. So. Uh, listening, I think that's always a, a, an important thing to be kind of constantly improving on. Come on, Dimitri. Well, to me, leadership is all about empowerment, right? So, so the leader, it, to me, is not to command or to tell what person needs to do. To me, it, for him, for me, to empower him to uh, do, uh, you know, do his best at you know what he can do without me telling him what to do. So. Perfect. Perfect. Actually, delegation is one of mine, so that works out sure. perfectly. Cool. Thanks, guys. Three long but fantastic days with the team in Milwaukee. I uh, headed home here in the Detroit airport. You can see behind me, there's a Delta plane someplace. Uh, there goes the train, you can see the reflection. Uh, I want to wrap up our discussion on leadership. And in discussing leadership for quite a while on the uh, 5 a.m. Club Slack channel, ultimately the great Brent Kelly left me with three nuggets to consider um, when thinking about ourselves as leaders and leadership in general. One, what am I required to do? As, as a leader, I think my job is to set course, strategy, vision for a company, and ultimately help my team members, the people who work with me and, and, and for me, help them be the best versions, the best professionals that they can, help pull as much of uh, their skill and talent and desire out of them and help them produce the level of work that they want to produce and are capable of. Number two, what brings me as a leader the greatest return? And this is a tough one. Uh, I struggle with this because I believe too much probably in the serendipity of life and, and that putting in the work, ultimately you get the reward. If I had to answer, this question, question number two, I'd say I get the most return from getting out of the weeds, from getting out of the tactics and letting my people do their job, letting them make the decisions, letting them push forward and own a process and enabling them, giving them the tools and, and resources to do that work. I'm only one guy. I'm only one person, I can only do so much. The only way as leaders that we can get the most back in return for our efforts is by allowing our people to be the best versions of themselves. And I don't know, that feels kind of fluffy to me as an answer, but so much of, of what I think about every day is about the people that work with me. Um, for better or for worse, uh, I want my people to be successful because if they're successful, my company will be successful. Question number three, what gives me the greatest reward? I guess reward monetarily is, I don't really know that I necessarily care too much about that. I guess from a monetary standpoint, it's growing the company. And I think maybe that's the whole crux of this leadership thing. For me, being a leader isn't about making decisions. I mean, that's part of it, obviously. The buck stops with you and you have to, you have to embrace that. But really, the greatest reward for me, both financial, emotional, whatever, comes from letting my people do their job. Because when all of us are pointed in the same direction, firing on all cylinders, we do the best work we can as a company for our clients, which in turn creates more opportunities for our clients to spend more money with our company, for new clients to come in, for our, for our brand to grow, for, our, for, for everything. If, if you want the bounty of reward from a monetary and emotional standpoint, the only way that happens is if everybody inside your company is happy and firing on all cylinders and pushing forward. If you don't have happy people, you don't have a happy company, and nobody wants to do business with an unhappy company. As a leader, you're only as good as the people that you work with and work alongside. I just, that's, that's what I believe. I care so much about them and about them being successful. I care so much about my people and for their happiness and their success. And I know that every day isn't bright and shiny, but, but truly I can't achieve my goals if they don't achieve theirs. I guess that's really the deal, for better or for worse. All right, I gotta catch this plane and go home.